In the past two years of golfing, I've had over 25 hours of golf coaching and about four different golf coaches. I'm gonna give you my top 10 tips of what I wish I would have known before I hired my first golf coach. Right, my first tee shot looked pretty good. Good morning, everybody. As you can see, I've got my act together. So, got my shave on for you, looking like a presentable golfer, because you deserve more. The first thing of one of the 10 things I wish I had known is fundamentals are more important than a skill. When I first started my lesson, I was a brand new golfer. I barely knew how to hold a golf club. I didn't know much about anything other than just watching golf on TV. And I think it would have been much better to learn the simple things of how do you hold a golf club? What is swinging a golf club like? How do you swing a golf club and hit a ball left? How do you hit a ball right? Instead of trying to learn the skill of, oh, I need you to hit a draw or I need you to hit a fade or whatever the case it may be. I'm also doing some practice today. Got some yellow Pro V1 balls or optic green. Just off the bat. So I think of it like when you go to school, right, to learn how to write cursive. You don't walk in the first day of class and they just start teaching you how to write cursive script and things of the cursive alphabet. First thing to teach a kid how to write is, you gotta learn how to hold a pen. Launch monitors are great tools. They're very powerful. Just like Spider-Man's uncle always said, with great power comes great responsibility. As a beginning golfer, I learned on a TrackMan, which I think some people might look at it and say, hey, that's a really cool device, a really cool tool to learn as a new golfer on. But as a brand new golfer, you basically stand in front of this magical, you know, golf box, you hit a shot and then it goes beep beep. And then you look back at this box and you wait for it to tell you how terrible you suck at golf. And a lot of the onus is on the instructor to better help you understand what that data and information means. But I think as a new golfer, that could be a very dangerous tool. I know that shot was absolutely craptacular, but where in the world did it go? And this isn't like I'm um, anti coaches that use TrackMans or tools or GC quads. I think they're absolutely great tools. Uh, I'm speaking from the perspective of a very, very beginning golfer, like someone that barely knows how to hold the club. Great tools in the beginning. I think learning feel and fundamentals is just absolutely paramount. That's what helped me eventually lower my scores when I first started golfing. Flat stick's working. On to my next point. Have a clear goal. Why you want a lesson is significantly more important than what your lesson is gonna be about. All too often, someone walks in and they say this. Yeah, you know, coach, I just wanna be a little bit more consistent in golf. All right, show me what we're working with. Let's see that swing. Don't get me wrong, you don't have to walk into a golf coach and have like a detailed game plan and be able to break down your stats to every percentage and know your dispersion and your yardages and all your carries. Like your coach should be able to help you figure out some of that. But I did the same thing of just like, oh, I wanna be better or I wanna get good. Like it's such a vague general idea. If you don't have a clearly defined goal, it obviously leaves a lot of room for you to be upset because how do you know if you've achieved that goal? How do you know if you're getting closer to it? How do you know if anything is working Working, you know relative to that goal I just think it's important to have a general idea of why you want a lesson and why you think that's gonna help improve your game
you know a shot was bad when you've got a wide angle lens and you still are having trouble <laughs> getting the putt into the frame. Try and work this one out. Scotty is saving my butt today. My next point is, for every hour of lesson that you take, you're probably gonna need about four to 10 hours of practice just to work that new information into your game, into your system. The, the dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. <laughs> That's such a cheesy quote, but it's true. I don't know where this comes from and why it's the thing in golf. I played saxophone for about 15 years um, to a pretty, pretty good standard. I've never been with someone that was learning how to play instrument and they walked in thinking they were going to be Yo-Yo Ma for their first lesson without any practice. Listen, we're talking about practice. You're learning a new technique. You're learning a new skill. It's going to take some time and some practice to work that in. And the unfortunate thing with golf, from what I've learned, you have no idea how that lesson is going to impact you or how that new information is going to work with your game. I'd say four to 10 hours of practice play, specifically play on the court. So just factor that into how you're planning your lessons and what you're doing when you work with your coach. I think another good thing that we never think about is how do you learn? There are people who are visual learners. There are people who learn best by watching other people do things. They're better at mimicking. There's a lot of ways to learn. There are a lot of good coaches out there, but if their teaching style isn't the way that you learn, it's not that they're a bad coach. It's just that you need a different learning method or learning methodology. So I would say, if you can, not if you can, I would actually request this. Coaches are expensive nowadays. Ask to watch and observe one of their hour lessons. I remember I had a really top world-renowned PGA coach back in Chicago. The way he taught was not conducive to my learning style. I'm a feel-based learner. Literally the way that works best with me, and you'll see it in my videos with my coach. He'll put his hands on my body, on my arms, and help guide and instruct to give me a certain feeling. And that's exactly the kind of learning that I like to get from. Another point that I want to make is, sorry, there's a greenskeeper in the background, so I hope that make it a little bit closer so that you can hear me. You know, what's their availability? Are they uh, booked out? Are they a world-class coach that you need to set up an appointment three, six, seven, eight months in advance to get in? How does that fit in with your schedule? How does that fit in with your game plan? I went with a very uh, well-known coach and it was just impossible to book them. It was impossible to get any feedback. It was impossible to get any communication. And I'm not suggesting that coaches, you know, have to just give away free hours of lessons, but I don't think sending a quick text message and a quick video, hey, what you told me I'm working on is doing this or is doing that. What are your thoughts? I wanna continue working on that. So when I come back for our next lesson, it's as productive as possible. That's gonna be short too. Oh, no, get up. I like that. Just gotta pepper that green. Get it surrounded or make that flag surrender. My other point is price. It's an important factor. I haven't found a lot of success with just the one and done lesson. I mean, again, going back to my days uh, playing saxophone, like I don't know why golf is any different. It's gonna take more than one 30 minute, 40 minute, 50 minute, 60 minute uh, lesson for you to get better at golf. 
I think having lessons in spurts of three has worked best for me, but obviously you know what your own learning curve is and what it takes for you to figure things out. I would definitely recommend that you look at the idea of fitting at least two to three lessons into your schedule. Price is gonna be a huge impact to that. Is this coach $225 an hour? Are they $100 an hour? Are they $75 an hour? That kind of stuff adds up. But let's also be real. I constantly read in forums and look online and all I see is people saying, oh, lessons are too expensive. Lessons, I can't afford this or golf all of this. But every time I go to the, you know, the course or the driving range, somebody's got a brand new $500 driver. You got $500 for the new Taylor Cala Title Rattlesnake Cobra Viper Max with Kung Fu grip, you got time for some lessons. I certainly don't have a Scotty camera because it makes me putt any better. I like shiny things just as much as the next guy. That driver isn't gonna be fixing my slice, but there's a very real possibility that a few lessons with the instructor might actually help you play some better golf. Certainly doesn't make me putt any better. That's low too. For one of my next points is on course lessons, on course lessons, on course lessons. I can't begin to even explain how much my game got better when I took an instructor on course with me. It's one thing to hit out of a bay, it's one thing to hit out of a practice area, or even on a driving range of real grass. But when you go to the course and golf is asking a thousand different questions from you, what do you do on this slide when the ball's above your feet, below your feet, where to hit the ball, course planning, management, oh. All of that stuff is so important. On course lesson, on course lesson, on course lesson. The worst part about walking and hitting terrible shots is you gotta go find your ball after. My other point is ask lots of questions. Why does this happen? What does this do? Why this technique? What am I doing with this? And not like annoyingly questions of like, oh, well, what is it gonna take to get better? It's like, not those questions, but if you don't understand something, speak up. Coaches are there to give you information. That's what they love doing, which is teaching people. And if you don't understand something, don't just sit there and, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, okay. I have no idea what the hell the coach is talking about. You're paying good money to have your coach teach you. Speak up. Ask a few questions. If you don't understand something, hey, I don't understand that because here's what I think or here's what happens when I do that. Would you mind sharing with me what you think about that or how you think this makes sense or why I would want to hold the club this way or swing the club this way or have this thought? Don't be afraid to challenge uh, your coach if you don't understand something. They want to see you get better. They obviously want to see you come back. They don't want you to be frustrated. Ask lots of questions. I'm gonna go with a wild guess here, but I'd say this terribly struck ball is about 200 yards from that flag. And I got a straight look at it. Time for blue. Oh, be good. <laughs> a asking good questions, asking smart questions. There were so many things that I just didn't know. One of the things that I take 100% onus for, and I know I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, I've had four different coaches. I'm on my fourth coach, and I really like this one. Uh, you've seen him in some of the promo, uh, Big Kurt. I didn't have a bunch of different lessons and lessons and instructors because they were bad. It's because I was a bad student. I didn't ask questions. I went to the coach and expected them to just give me all the answers. And that's just not how life works. Oh, no you didn't, Kenny. Oh, you are a bad Kenny cat. My absolute last and final tip, and this is gonna sound a little bit, you know, simple and just basic, but be open. I just feel like there's a lot that can really get in your head and there's a lot of things that you can try to believe or take as 100% fact without having any information. Be open to the possibility that you could be wrong and maybe that could make you better. Be open to the possibility that someone has something new to teach you. Be open to the possibility that there's a lot more you can learn. I can't think of anybody who has been at the top of their game in any professional athlete or sport anywhere in the world that hasn't had an instructor. I'm not saying that every instructor is gonna be the right person for you. That would be crazy. Go into lessons with an open mind. It's kind of a weird tip to give somebody, but that's really all I got for you. I'm gonna finish out these last few golf shots. Deuces. Let's keep it moving. Gotta love golf!
I, I don't know what it is. My, my game is so terrible that, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I got pissed off and I shouldn't have hit so soon there. Hey, I'm a senile senior, man. You know, when you get in your 70s, you kind of lose part of it. You're a young guy. You're not even in your 20s.